Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of these lessons. First of all, they're free. So you can watch it as many times as you need to understand the concept. Secondly, if I cover something and it's confusing to you still, hit your back button and look at it again. And third, when we come to a you try it problem, hit your pause key, try the problem on paper and pencil, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. You may have heard me say that math doesn't do anything on its own. It's just a tool to help us model and understand the real world. And today we're going to try to understand parallel lines, transversals, and similar triangles. And when I look at a picture of the real world, like this absolutely gorgeous lake, I don't see any parallel lines. I don't see any transversals or similar triangles. I can kind of see things that are similar to triangles. For instance, that's kind of a triangle, and that's kind of a triangle. And this triangle is a little bit similar to this triangle, but it's really a stretch to say that they're simple triangles. But if I come to the city where man's made the world, I see all kinds of parallel lines, and I see triangles, and I see transversals, and I see all kinds of stuff that I don't see in nature. Well, I think what it boils down to is man has a very limited, finite mind, and God and nature have an infinite mind, and they can handle much more complicated stuff than we can. So we're going to stick to things like parallel lines, transversals, and similar triangles. Well, I think you know what parallel lines are. Parallel lines are two lines that are this, always the same distance apart. They're always exactly the same distance apart, and they're straight lines. And if you see arrows like that on a couple of lines, that means they're parallel. Well, how about a transversal? What's that? A transversal is a line that crosses two parallel lines. And because the lines are parallel, the angle that the transversal crosses the line is the same on both the top line and the bottom line. We know that this angle 2 is going to be exactly equal to this angle 1. And you can see that. That this angle is bigger and it's equal to the bigger angle up here. And this angle is smaller and it's equal to the, the angle number 2. And we call angle number 2 and angle number 1 alternating interior angles. And alternating interior angles are going to be equal. We know a couple of other things as well. We know that opposite angles are equal. Angle 1 and this angle right here are going to have the same number of degrees. And angle 8 is going to have the same number of degrees as angle 2. So 1, 2, 7 and 8 all have the same number of degrees. We know even more. We know that there are 180 degrees from there to there. So we know that this angle is going to be 180 degrees less angle 7. And this angle is going to be 180 degrees less angle 2. So angles 4 and angle 6 are also equal. And I bet you, I bet you guessed this one. This angle is going to be equal to that angle. Well, now let's think about triangles. What if I were to throw another transversal onto these parallel lines? I kind of have two triangles, don't I? And I know something about the angles because of the laws that we learned about transversals. I know that angle 7 is going to equal angle 8. How do I know that? Well, among other things, I know that angle 7 has to equal the alternating interior angle, and this angle is an opposite angle to 8, so angle 7 and angle 8 are equal. 
Well, let's make these triangles a little easier to see. I'll paint one uh, kind of a beige color and I'll outline the other one in red. So there's two triangles there and the larger one and the smaller one kind of fit together very nicely. And guess what? These are similar triangles. How do we know that? Well, let me show you how. We already figured out that angle 8 equals angle 9. And we already figured out that angle 2 is the same number of degrees as angle 7. And angle number 10 is the same for both triangles. So what we know is that the smaller triangle and the larger triangle, when they're lined up so that the corresponding sides of the triangles are uh, in the same position, that the angles, the three angles of each of the triangles, the three corresponding angles, are exactly equal. Well, what about the sides? You can see they're not equal. This side is the corresponding side to this side, but the bottom side is much bigger. But here's the interesting thing. The side on the larger triangle is proportionately larger and similar to the sides of the smaller triangle. In other words, if to get from that side to that side, I have to increase that length by 150%, then if I increase that length by 150%, I'll get the length of that corresponding side of the larger triangle. And this side is going to grow by 150% to become that side. Well, here's a couple of similar triangles. And we're going to identify why they're similar. But just to start out with, I superimposed the smaller triangle over the larger triangle. So you can see that they're the same triangle. One's just a reduction of the other. Or alternately, one's an enlargement, a proportional enlargement of the other. Now if I label the angles and the sides of each of the triangles, I can say, because I know they're similar triangles, I can say certain things. I can say that angle A is going to be exactly equal to angle X. And angle B is going to be exactly equal, have exactly the same number of degrees as its corresponding angle Y. And I can also say that about angles C and Z. What about the sides? Well, I can say that side A is going to be similar to side X. I can say that side B is going to be similar to side Y. And that side C is going to be similar to side Z. And what that means is that if the growth between side Z and side C is 150%. In other words, if 150% of the length of Z equals the length of C, then X is going to grow by 150% to become A. And B is going to equal 150% of Y. Well, let's see what you learned. Given that that smaller angle is 33 degrees, how many degrees are in angle X? Hit your pause button and then hit your forward key to find the answer. Well, they told us that this angle was 33 degrees. And we can calculate what that angle is because we know there's 180 degrees between there and there. That's a straight line. So this angle is going to be 180 degrees less 33 degrees, or 147 degrees. Well, if we know this is 147 degrees, then we know this is 147 degrees because they're alternating interior angles. So the answer is 147 degrees. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. Well, this one's easy if we can identify which angles are corresponding. 
And we can kind of do that. I mean, we know that this angle and this angle are both the right angles. And we can see that that's the longest side on both of these triangles. So if we turn the smaller triangle so it lines up in the same acclimation as the larger triangle, then we can pretty clearly see that this angle is going to be 38 because this angle is 38. Well, you know, this is more like nature than, than math. I mean, I don't see any triangles there, but, but maybe I do. Maybe there's a triangle that I could make that represents the boy and his shadow, and another triangle I could make that represented the tree and its shadow. And maybe imposing that rigid triangle on nature would help us understand and figure it out. And in this case, it surely does, because what we have are two similar triangles. And we kind of know they're similar because the sun's way up here, like way out of my screen, and it's coming down at the same angle on both of these uh, shadows. So I know that that angle and that angle are the same, and this is a right angle, and this angle is going to equal this angle, so this triangle and this triangle are similar. And if I have similar triangles, then I know the sides grow proportionately. Well, I know that the boy is five feet tall, and I'm trying to figure out how tall the tree is. And I know the boy's shadow is two and a half feet, but the taller tree casts a ten foot shadow. Ten feet is like four times as big as two and a half feet, isn't it? So the trees going to be four times five feet tall. The tree is 20 feet tall. In order for these triangles to be similar, then the growth between the corresponding sides would have to be identical. In other words, the growth between the 9-inch side and the 14-inch side would have to equal the growth between the 6-inch side and the 8-inch side. And that's not the case. The 14-inch side is 155% larger than the 9-inch side. And the 8-inch side is only 133% larger than the 6-inch side. So these are not similar triangles. You know, it's, it's helpful to remember that math isn't the real world. Math simplifies and models the real world so we can understand it better. And hopefully you understand parallel lines, transversals, and similar figures better than you did before. So it's time to go to mastermath.info and download the worksheet on par parallel lines, transversals, and similar figures and try your luck there. And then go back and try the subject quiz on parallel lines, transversals, and similar figures. I hope you learned something and had a pretty good time, and I hope I see you again real soon.